Clear Channel Station. I'm Phil Tower. Thanks for listening. Clear Lake Community is brought to you by Michigan Education Trust, the Michigan Department of Community Health. For more information on breast cancer and mammograms, call the American Cancer Society at 1-800-227-2345. Clear Lake Community is a public affairs program of Clear Channel Media and Entertainment. Listen again next week at this time for another segment of Clearly Community right here on your favorite Clear Channel Media and Entertainment radio station. Attention, Michigan car and truck buyers. This message is for you. Benton Chevrolet Cadillac GMC has sounded the overstocked emergency alert system. Benton is wall-to-wall from Seaway Drive to Henry Street and bursting at the seams. We must move metal now. Shop our giant 20-acre motor mall and shop over 1,200 vehicles in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Get 0% financing, rebates up to $10,000, and during the wall-to-wall event, we'll pay you 120% above book value for your vehicle. Drive a new Chevy cruise 42 mile per gallon just 109 a month chevy malibu's 33 miles per gallon just 119 a month or a silverado 4x4 just 195 a month banks on hand for immediate approval and nobody in michigan sells for less we must move metal now we're overstocked sell your vehicle high and buy low at the lowest prices of the year shop the 20 acre motor mall benton chevrolet cadillac gmc both sides of henry street muskegon don't miss this sale Wow, this place is so adorable. I can't believe we haven't stopped in sooner. Yeah, it's really cute. Betsy, look at these sweaters. Two for $75, and they'd look amazing on our girls. Maybe they would. I'm not sure if it's the right size. Oh, come on. You know, they're perfect. What's wrong? Suzanne, I have no business being in this store. I should not be shopping. Things are really tight right now. Tight? Are you and Michael having trouble? We're behind on our mortgage, and Michael is really worried. Listen, Bill and I had the same problem a few months ago, and we got some really great counseling, and it was free. I'm going to email you the information as soon as we get home. Suzanne, you're the best. If you even think you may be in danger of foreclosure, call the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. Certified housing counselors can help you work through your problems, and the service is free. Call the NFCC at 866-687-6322 or visit mortgagehelpnow.org. That's mortgagehelpnow.org. This has been a public service from the NFCC. A message from Orlando Bloom, Liam Neeson, Lawrence Fishburne, Salma Hayek, and Taya Leone. 24,000 children die every day from preventable causes. Like not getting enough food or medicine. Or clean, safe water to drink. But we are gaining ground. A generation ago, twice as many children were dying. Still, 24,000 every day? I believe. I believe. I believe that number should be zero. Believe in zero. Join the effort. Visit UNICEFUSA.org. Gum government, you sorry so and so's. You got your damn hands in every pocket of my clothes. Good morning, Muskegon. This is I on Muskegon, and I'm Jim Riley here in Muskegon's Clear Channel Studios with my friend and engineer, that legendary Oscar Osbo. And back with us to help out as a co host today, the legendary faux professor even though he is a teacher of of knowledge and other sort of things, and our legal uh, um, guru for all sorts of cool legal stuff. Andy Fink is back with us. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, Jim. And uh, as, uh, as we love to tell you, and um, it, it's getting better all the time, the listenership is up, hits to the... Uh, the blog and the uh, then the websites are up and the interestingly what I'm finding is folks are communicating um, to the email address with uh, lots of questions and, and information. That's good. Um, yeah, so that that is uh, is is a good sign. But we continue to be that number one rated political talk radio show. And you know, it's, it, it, I was looking around at other counties and there is a, 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 a one show in in uh, Holland that talks about local politics. And I've not been able to find one in uh, Grand Rapids that does that. There may very well be, uh, but not uh, not one that I've been able to find. So we are, we are talking about politics here in Muskegon County. And uh, uh, we invite you to call in. Our phone number here is 231-830-3109. 
And again, that's what really what I am Muskegon is all about, which is uh, bringing the citizenry, bringing you folks who pay the taxes, you folks who who depend on the services uh, into the political conversation. Um, uh, th- th- we know that uh, in in far too many cases, those folks who make the decisions to spend and uh, to cut back on services, uh, they really don't want your input. And uh, and we we do here at I am Muskegon. So, uh, Danny, are, are you getting uh, uh, invited by elected officials to, for your council on, on decisions prior to you making them? No. There we go. Well, no that's... one contact me about this show. Well, not not about the show, but but just about you know about decisions. I, I didn't want to hear that. Well, the reason the, the reason I bring this up. Well, no, I did want to hear that because uh, uh, although I didn't want it directed at the show, <laughs> I got the right answer to the wrong question. Yeah, right. um, but. Uh, uh, you know, we had that situation a few weeks ago when uh, uh, County Commissioner Alan Jagger uh, specifically requested uh, for a, a few more days to review the uh, the information when the county made that, uh, I, I guess I would call it a, a faux loan, a false loan, or a phony baloney loan uh, to Brookhaven. And it, uh, County Commissioner Alan Jagger said, look, this is a pretty complicated situation. I don't understand it. Can we have a few days where I can review it and also bring it to my constituents, the folks who, who actually vote and will ultimately have to pay for these loans and, uh, and find out a little bit about it. And, uh, uh, they did bring it to a vote. There were eleven county commissioners there, and the vote was one to 11, one to ten. So they they weren't interested in in uh, in having the citizens out there. But we are. And uh, one thing I like to do is uh, is start the uh, the show off if I can with a with a quote. And actually, my favorite one is that Churchill quote about criticisms, is a which, which I. I guess I'll read one more time, but I have another quote. Criticism may not be agreeable, but it is necessary. It fulfills the same function as pain in the human body. It calls attention to an unhealthy state of things. And we are not intending in any way to bash uh, Muskegon County. Uh, We may be bashing certain decisions that have been made by uh, certain elected uh, officials and certain department heads and things of that sort. But we want to bring attention to an unhealthy state of things so that we can make them more healthy down the road. And uh, uh, But the quote that I wanted to start off with uh, this morning really goes kind of hand in hand. Uh, this is from Patrick Henry, the great American patriot, and that is, The liberties of a people never were nor ever will be secure when the transactions of their rulers may be concealed from them. And, again, that's really what this show is all about. Uh, we want to make sure that you folks out there in radio land, podcast land, computer land, um, and even uh, those folks who send us those emails and call us in, that you know what's going on. Because uh, if you have a situation where you've been an elected official and you get no feedback, the natural human response, I believe, is going to be, dang it, I'm doing a great job. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard that from from uh, some city council folks at, at uh, one of the local communities. I said, you know, you, you don't have many people showing up at your meetings, you should do. I, I think it would be kind of fun. We could we'd take the camera out and we'll get a get a microphone and we'll have you go around and say, ask people if they know who their their uh, their person is in office. Yeah, yeah. Who, who's the mayor of your who's of your mayor? city? Who's, uh, who's yeah. your county commissioner? Commissioner. Yeah. Um, well, it's you know. I every, bet you. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll see that on Jay Leno and, and yeah. Letterman occasionally. You know, they'll go out and they'll ask who's the vice president. Heck, they'll even ask who's the president. Right. It's it's uh, pretty sad. Yeah, we. I, I I can tell you, I I did. I was trying to get signatures uh, for what we called a contract with Muskegon, which with with Muskegon County. It was a petition uh, for it wasn't an official petition, but just to get support uh, for ten items uh, that we wanted the county commission to uh, to approve. They were pretty general, but you know things like having more public meetings, having more time. Uh, for, uh, between the time that a, a spending item was presented to the time that was voting and things of that sort. And I, I went in different places to get signatures, and almost everybody signed. But the funny thing was, I asked that same question mm-hmm. that you just asked, and that was, do you know who your county commissioner is? And I only found one person 
And the only reason she knew who her county commissioner was was because the county commissioner happened to live across the street from him. And she said, I need to start about Big Bob Bob. Bob. You know, yeah. So, 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 uh, so I, I guess that's one way to know about it. But we do want to make sure that the transactions of your rulers. Now that's entertainment. <laughs> well, it, it was. Oh, good God. She had all sorts of interesting things to yeah, tell I'm me sure, sure. that, unfortunately, I can't say on the radio. Um, but uh, uh, as we uh, I just want to remind you, of course, you're listening on the radio or or, or you might be listening on uh, News Talk 1090.com uh, using iHeartRadio. And uh, we just got a piece of information, uh, which they put in front of us. But iHeartRadio, which is yeah, not I, I that, that old. Yeah. OK. And it's now they've got 10 million folks that have signed up. Uh, right. To be able to get all the various uh, clear channel stations on iHeartRadio. That's just the people that signed up. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so so that's that's it's growing. Uh, we hope we're adding to that growth, and it does make it easy for you if you want to listen to the show. I thought that was just your show, ten million. No? Oh, well, it does say it does say the I on the Skegan show ten <laughs> that's million. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> I wrote that in. Another <laughs> softball that you tossed me that just uh, zoomed right by my head. Thank you so much. Well, it's morning. It's Sunday morning, and boy, is it a nice morning too. Um, but you can you can of course listen to us on iHeartRadio, but you can also listen to today's show and every one of the uh, past shows on ionmuskegon.com. Just click on the link. We usually post uh, the Sunday show uh, in the early afternoon. So uh, I'll give you the phone number again uh, also today, 231-421-4409. That's my home number. That's not the call-in number. Uh, and the ionmuskegon at gmail.com is a way to co- uh, communicate with me. And if you want to call here uh, and talk with us on, on the air this morning, 231-830-3109. Just out of curiosity, do you get any comments on the... Uh uh, YouTube? Are uh, you still up on YouTube? I don't know. No, I haven't. Oh, uh, and that, thank you for mentioning it, though. On ionmuskegon.com, uh, Oscar videos our show. And uh, in this uh, today, you'll, of course, be able to see Professor Fink and, and uh, non Professor Riley sitting side by side. But you video the show, so it's, it's the same show that you'd hear on the radio, but you've got us bouncing around and j- jumbling papers and spilling coffee. And uh, that hits sometime early in the week and i put that link so that you can see the whole show on youtube uh usually tuesday or wednesday and you can get that on i am muskegon also and then of course uh the previous week's show oscar puts on tv 38 uh from on every monday night from 8 to 9 30 p.m prime time and um, that would be comcast uh, 397 now that's probably where you get your 10 million people listening. right there you go yeah, that wouldn't nothing. wouldn't surprise me at all. I, um, so. I, I know that uh, uh, the, where when I go to Myers, uh, old ladies are throwing uh, thongs <laughs> thongs at me. So yeah. it's, a, it's a tremendous experience. You're girdles at you. Hey, it's Jim. a tremendous experience to be a, <laughs> a, a, a media <laughs> mini star, micro star here in, in Muskegon County. <laughs> hey, on this, uh, I thought I was looking at some of the uh, some of the events that happened on this day in history. And in 1774, Britain's Parliament passed the Coercive Acts uh, Act, I guess, to punish the American colonists for their increasingly anti-British behavior. And of course, our uh, the federal government is passing any number of things, including um, uh, uh, drones flying around in the sky and everything else, uh, to to punish us or at least to uh, to keep us in line. Well, this was in 1774. On this exact same day in 1775, North Carolina became the first cal- colony to declare its independence. So that didn't work out all that well for the for the uh, the British. I, I don't think it's going to work well for uh, for for our government at any level if they want to punish us for not doing what they want us to do. Um, another uh, how did that work out for you uh, item that happened on this day in 1902. The United States ended a three-year military presence in Cuba as the Republic of Cuba was established. So we took over Cuba uh, at the end of the Spanish-American War, I, I believe it must have been the case, and or at least as a result of. And uh, we set it off on a path. We were essentially nation-building uh, so that we would have a tremendous uh, ally and friend in, in Cuba. And, of course, uh, how did that work out for us? Not, not all that well. So... Uh, Maybe maybe we ought to, as a country, uh, avoid nation building. And and uh, and as we're finding out, uh, even 
corporation or company building doesn't seem to be working out too well as the Solandras and the uh, the, the Fiskers and and, and the, the General Motors. The, the, well, the General Motors, with where there's still uh, notwithstanding what what uh, has been uh, advertised and and repeated often enough, so that it's become truth for some, but it's in fact a, a lie. Uh, General Motors has not paid off its debt to the United States uh, taxpayer. It's still in the neighborhood of twenty million dollars, which is kind of an interesting number. Million. Uh, thank you very much. With a B, twenty billion dollars. Yep, uh, that's the big the B number. And, well, and it's kind of interesting because uh, the President uh, Obama's uh, weekend speech that they the, the president does, and then the the opposing party would respond. But he was chastising uh, the, the, one of the largest banks in the country, J.P. Morgan, for losing two billion dollars. Now, the the interesting thing was uh, that J.P. Morgan's two billion dollars was lost from J.P. Morgan. And it was only part of about, a, I think, a $13 billion profit in that quarter. So uh, it was, even though it's a big number uh, to, to you and I, uh, it, in the grand scheme of things, it's a very small number to J.P. Morgan. But it was money from J.P. Morgan. At the same time, there seems to be no chastising of the $20 billion. Thank you, Professor Fink. Uh, the $20 billion that is yet to be paid back. By General Motors, and uh, uh, General Motors does seem to be healthier, and perhaps it will come back. So, uh, knock on wood, uh, we will hear um, uh, the, the better news down the pike. And uh, that wonderful music is back. So, we will take a break and come back and continue our uh, talking about stuff happened this past week. I'm Sanaki, and it's Polka time and a perfect time to gather your family together for a good, clean, wholesome family show every Saturday and Sunday mornings right here on the Talk of Muskegon with the Polka Melodies. News Talk 1090 WKBZ Muskegon, WOOD HD2 Muskegon, and News Talk 1090.com. Come on! It's Polka time! Polka time! It's Polka time! Polka time! Amanda had $3,000 until her transmission went. Rick had $4,000 before his engine died. Sue has no money and her onboard computer broke. No one likes putting money into their car for repairs. Get AutoAssure and be assured you won't have to. With AutoAssure, you never have to put money into expensive covered repairs. You keep it. It's guaranteed protection. You can keep your mechanic, your dealer. AutoAssure pays them directly. For free information, call now. 1-800-710-2577. You choose the coverage you need. If your car has less than 200,000 miles, you won't pay a single penny for any covered repair. Not for a fuel injection system, air conditioning, suspension system, or anything else. So the choice is yours. Do you want to pay for expensive auto repairs or let AutoAssure pay them for you? If you're sick of spending your hard-earned money on car repairs, call now for your free information. 1-800-710-2577. Again, that's 1-800-710-2577. 1-800-710-2577. Attention, Michigan car and truck buyers. This message is for you. Benton Chevrolet Cadillac GMC has sounded the overstocked emergency alert system. Benton is wall-to-wall -wall from Seaway Drive to Henry Street and bursting at the seams. We must move metal now. Shop our giant 20-acre motor mall and shop over 1,200 vehicles in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Get 0% financing, rebates up to $10,000, and during the wall-to-wall -wall event, we'll pay you 120% above book value for your vehicle. Drive a new Chevy Cruze, 42 mile per gallon, just $109 a month. Chevy Malibu's, 33 miles per gallon, just $119 a month. Or a Silverado 4x4, just $195 a month. Banks on hand for immediate approval, and nobody in Michigan sells for less. We must move metal now. We're overstocked. Sell your vehicle high and buy low at the lowest prices of the year. Shop the 20-acre motor mall. Benton Chevrolet Cadillac GMC, both sides of Henry Street, Muskegon. Don't miss this sale. The Talk of Muskegon. News Talk 1090, WKBZ. Well, you dead gum government, you sorry so-and-sos. You got your damn hands in every pocket of my clothes. And we're back at Ion Muskegon, Muskegon's number one rated political talk radio show. We're talking here with uh, Professor Andy Fink and, of course, the legendary Oscar Oswo. A um, couple of other things are going on. Birthdays today, famous birthdays today. Um, this one made me think of, of uh, Professor Fink because he is... 
pretty bright dude and has been of very good counsel to me and I know others over time. But uh, famous birthday in 1806, John Stuart Mill, very brilliant editor and philosopher. Oh, yes, one of my heroes. Is that the truth? Oh, yes. Okay, well, good for you. What well, doesn't surprise me because you, you sound a lot like uh, uh, the way I'm sure Mr. Mill would sound if there were recording devices and I had listened to them. But uh, at least in my imagination, you sound like him. He, but was, there, he was essentially a libertarian who did not like government, but he, he, but it, he was not a slave to that objective. He, he, he recognized that there were things that government could do better than private enterprise or private uh, effort. Yeah, I, th I think it, it, most libertarians understand, of course, that's a broad term uh, and, and been redefined in many ways lately, but, but libertarians understand that there is a need for government. It's just the question of, of the, uh, the absolute size. But there's two birthdays that kind of, kind of caught me uh, that, that are sort of converge a little bit. Um, a gal called, uh, her name was Sherilyn Sarkeesian Lapierre, was born in 1946. Sherilyn Sarkeesian Lapierre. Now, we all know her name. It's, uh, she's an entertainer. And uh, her name, actually, it's only a one-word name. One of the first big one-worders out there. What's that, her last name again? LaPierre. LaPierre. Well, it What's was. her middle name? Sarkeesian. Okay, that would be Cher. Oh, well, yes, it was. How did you know that? Because I knew that she was Armenian, and Arkasian is a, uh, has an Sarkeesian. Armenian end to it. There we go. Well, yes, it was Cher's birthday in 1946. Well, the reason I bring this up... Well, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that's... That's the first, first well, time I heard her name. And, and the Sherilyn is C-H-E-R-I-L-Y-N, so that, that makes perfect sense. But on the same day, in 1960, uh, Susan Cousel was born. Now, Susan Cousel was a singer in the Cousels. They, they had a, a little bit of a the, the popularity yeah. back into the, into the 70s, I think it was. Hair. Your hair, I think I love yeah, you. A couple yeah. of those little, but they were kind of the, they were the family band. Oh, I think I love you. That was Partridge Family, the ones oh, might that, have been. that copied the Cousels. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Exactly. Well, the, the funny thing is that she starts out in the Cousels, this this you know all American apple pie American band, and and they list the uh, the bands that she was in. Starts out with the Cousels. The next one is the Continental Drifters. She finishes up with the Psycho Sisters. So there we go. <laughs> you know, things things worked out. I'm sure very interestingly for for Susan Cousel. Um, hey, a couple things happening today in. You still have time to get uh, get dressed um, today from 11 to 3. And you can arrive there probably as late as uh, 12, 12.30. But from 11 to 3 um, at the uh, Muskegon Country Club, the uh, board of the, uh, the the Queen of the Great Lakes, the Milwaukee Clipper, will have their brunch. And the brunch actually is from 11 to 1. Uh, but there's live silent auction, which is really spectacular. I was talking with um, the, uh, the the head of that organization there, uh, T.J. Parker, who does a great job, by the way. They're, they're really spiffed up the ship and, of course, making moves to move it into a better location. But... Um, uh, they have tremendous uh, silent auction items. Great time to uh, to go out. Uh, of course, the view at the uh, Muskegon Country Club is spectacular on both both sides. And uh, uh, we were there last year. Honey Bunch and I will be there today. Uh, the the brunch is. Uh, I don't think it's can be equaled in Muskegon. So, from eleven to three, uh, I believe it's thirty dollars a ticket. Uh, some of that is uh, is a donation. Um, there's a cash bar for those of you who want to take uh, the trolley home and um but there'll be rallies uh, ra raffle and door prizes so that's that's happening today um next week uh actually there's something next week we need to talk about the girls on the run 1200 uh, girls yesterday downtown that was excellent and i i, I went uh, uh honey bunch and i uh, joined actually a candidate for uh, circuit uh, court judge david wells and his wife were also there among many many others uh, on the uh the lst 393 uh, to celebrate um armed forces day and they had a, a very very uh uh, moving tribute, a whole a variety of really <laughs> moving events that happened there, including a uh, 21-gun salute and, and a flyover by the uh, the World War II vintage uh, A6, uh, the four A6 aircraft. So one thing you didn't mention, uh, it's a professor. The professor knows about this one too, being a Whitehallian. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Relay for Life is going on right now in Whitehall. So is that the, going on right now? Right now, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Good. Um, the, we need a little. Actually, I'm getting. I'm having folks who are communicating to me information that that they'd like to see uh, publicized. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, if there's anybody up there in Whitehall's got some ideas, certainly let me know. Happy to help them out. Um, I, I do want to remind folks that I'm I'm at Carmen's next week. 
uh, I will only be at Carmen's on Tuesday, and I'll be there early. I'll be there from 1230 to 115 because there is uh, what the county commissioners call a planning session. These are the meetings they desperately do not want you to attend, and uh, but you are allowed to attend. Uh, it will be in the um, what they call the training center, which is on the corner of Apple and uh, Pine, I believe, um, room 202. But if you want to go to that planning session, certainly join me at at uh, Carmen's beforehand, we can talk about it. Of course, some you, sense. You, you film everything, you know. If that, you, and when, I do you, film it and put it on I am yeah, You com. were talking about uh, not giving birthday gifts to to guys. I think one birthday gift that we should get you though is this little spy cam that you could put on, like, like in your hair. Or something. A little. <laughs> well, it's probably, it would have to be quite small to be put into my hair. Yeah, right. but, uh, <laughs> maybe my nose. It would a have little, probably plenty of room in my eight nose. Pen type spy pen. Okay. You know, yeah. Right. We could get you, and of course, they wouldn't even notice the difference. We'd get you some of those glasses with the, yeah, there you the go. Groucho Marx nose and mustache <laughs> and put the camera in there. And, and that's what the commission thinks you look like anyway. Yeah. Well, that's oh, sadly the truth, there I'm sure. Go. Well, okay, maybe uh, the, the, you know, well, the, my birthday is coming up uh, on <laughs> Uh, the same day as Custer's last stand and the first day of the Korean War. So there you go. those of you who are so inclined to provide <laughs> the, the noses. What would, those, what would that date be? Uh, that day is June 25th, uh, Custer's last stand and the first day of the Korean War. So it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. And the, and the, the next day is my born. birthday. <laughs> oh, my golly. Well, now, what happened on your birthday? What exciting things? Not a thing. The uh, oh. uh, Montague Whitehall Rotary is having a golf outing in celebration of my birthday. Oh. And it's a $60 a golfer, and you get to help support uh, water for poor people in uh, third world countries and fight polio worldwide. Ooh. Wow. What a combo. On your birthday. On my birthday. Well, that's quite a gift. Your birthday is, is far more productive than mine was, apparently. So, well, those those things are coming up. Um, hey, last week we talked, we had a great guest uh, from the Heartland uh, Institute. And I would recommend those uh, those of you who are interested in this, first off, their website, heartland.org, is a great website. But um, they do have live streaming of their international conference on climate change, which uh, starts tomorrow. And if you're really interested in getting some information that will will actually provide you with some true knowledge um uh you can you can watch it live streaming i imagine they'll they will um uh, record it and then you can watch it at any time that you like um a couple uh, other little things i wanted to touch base on uh you know we we had this big time um uh the traffic problems up on on the 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 causeway going to North Muskegon and the bridge up north. Folks picked up the phone, contacted their uh, their uh, representatives, and, and that thing got fixed up pretty quickly. Yeah. We do have power. And the interesting thing happened this past, um, uh, or actually yesterday, uh, the Republicans, the state Republicans, had their um, uh, state uh, convention. And among other things, they uh, got rid of the two state committee people. Uh, those are a part of the, essentially the board of directors of the National Republican Party. And uh, each state has two, a man and a woman. And uh, Holly Hughes, of course, who was our current state rep, uh, she was one of the, she was the woman. And um, uh, the, the Saul Anuzis was at least running for the, uh, uh, the, for the, the man's position. Both of those who apparently were considered by some to be establishment candidates, both I, lost. I think they were both incumbents. Okay, uh, uh, Anuzis might have been an incumbent. Uh, they both lost. And uh, um, uh, it's it, it's interesting enough that we will carry over <laughs> carry over that conversation uh, after we come back from the break, and and then we're going to start. We will get into an in depth analysis of uh, this this most recent uh, all the filings for people running for public office. So after the break, we will be back. Oh, don't you love me sometime? There's hundreds of fun and simple things you and your family can do to live a healthier lifestyle. Here's 20 of them. Eat less, eat slower, eat smarter, eat your fruits and veggies, stop eating before you're full, up your fiber, lower your calories, get off the bus early, do some gardening, do jumping jacks, take the stairs, take one, not two, take on a new sport, take a long walk home, walk instead of drive, bend, stretch, reach for the stars, climb the monkey bars, skip the fudge bars. <sighs> for many more simple tips, visit iHeartRadio.com slash Healthy Habits. A message from the Ad Council, NIH's We Can, and Clear Channel Communities. America had just gone to war when Felipe Adams volunteered. I knew that I was signing up for any of the consequences. 
I took a bullet to the side and left me paralyzed. For Armando de la Rosa, the Navy was a chance to serve and see the world. I got medically discharged in 2001. Armando and Felipe were brought together by a unique organization that serves our paralyzed veterans. If there was no PVA, it would be a lot of confusion. Our training is to better the veteran. We help out with the auto grant, the special housing adaptation grant, education, prosthetics. Our main focus is spinal cord injury and disease, but we see anybody. First thing he had asked me before he even asked my name was, was I being taken care of as a veteran? And I thought that was pretty good. Changing lives, building futures. That's Paralyzed Veterans of America. To learn more, visit pva.org. I can solve difficult problems for a Fortune 500 company. I can run a successful business. I can put my military experience to work for your company. I can manage your home improvements. I can publicize your message. I can teach your children. But I can't put my skills to work for your organization if I'm not given the opportunity. Nearly 50 million Americans have disabilities. Capitalize on their talents with employment practices that benefit everyone. Learn more at whatcanyoudocampaign.org. The Talk of Muskegon is News Talk 1090, WKBZ Muskegon, and heard 24 hours a day on WOOD HD2 Muskegon. Neon, day glow, flashing lights, special effects. Today's world puts our sense of sight on overload. Luckily, there are places we can go to refocus our senses. Our National Wildlife Refuges. It's a wonder how much you'll see once all the distractions fade away. You may see a lone eagle soaring past massive snow-capped mountains. Or a great horned owl perched stoically on a branch nearby. You may see the furry face of a baby sea otter curiously poking its head out of the dark blue sea. Or ancient rocks shaped by centuries of wind. When you see these things, you're seeing the world the way we found it. With over 500 refuges across America, you don't have to go far to make a special connection with nature. Learn more at fws.gov slash refuges. That's fws.gov slash refuges. I can solve difficult problems for a Fortune 500 company. I can run a successful business. I can manage your home improvements. I can publicize your message. I can motivate your audience. I can put my military experience to work for your company. I can teach your children. I can boost your bottom line. I can add value to your workplace. I could be a loyal and productive employee. But I can't put my skills to work for your organization if I'm not given the opportunity. If you don't recognize my talents and ability. If you don't hire me. If you don't have an open mind and a workplace that's open to everyone. If you don't realize that America works best when everybody works. What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? You can remember that it worked. It's what people can do. It's what people can do that matters. Nearly 50 million Americans have disabilities. Capitalize on their talents with employment practices that benefit everyone. Learn more at whatcanyoudocampaign.org. Suffering from... Hi, my name's Bob. Hi, Bob. Bob. So I see this ad on TV. It says I can reduce my debt by 50%. So I call. They told me to stop paying my bills, stop talking to my creditors... It didn't seem right, but they said they'd take care of everything. I gave them thousands of dollars, but most of it went to their fees. Getting out of debt is neither quick nor easy. There are those who will tell you anything just to win your trust. Sounded perfect. I did everything they told me to do. They never paid my creditors. They didn't even contact them. Turns out I'm even more in debt because the fees and the interest on my cards kept piling up. Bad advice from so-called experts can make your financial situation worse. And the bank turned me down for a mortgage. And that's when I realized my credit was shot. I should have gone straight to my creditors to begin with. There is a better way to get help. Talk to your creditors directly or to find a nonprofit agency near you. Visit DebtAdvice.org. DebtAdvice.org. Real solutions for real people. This has been a public service message. Muskegon. Well, you dead. Gum government, you sorry so and so's. You got your damn hands in every pocket of my clothes. Ready? And we are back at I on Muskegon. And uh, before the break, we were talking about this Republican convention. And uh, th- th- these things typically are pretty dull, but it was quite interesting because the, the two folks that, that ultimately won, Dave Ajima and um, 
Terry Lynn Land, who was uh, uh, had a few years back was our Secretary of State. They both ran on essentially a, a uh, maybe not a Tea Party platform per se, but certainly they ran as as more conservative than um, than than Holly Hughes, our current state representative, Holly Hughes, and uh, uh, Saul Anuzis, who was actually a past. Uh, state Republican Party chairman. But the, to me, the interesting point, uh, in addition to that, was that uh, in the second district, which encompasses Muskegon, that's the district that uh, represent, Representative Heisinger uh, represents, uh, a group of Tea Party folks came out, organized, they organized well in, in Muskegon County, I know, and they obviously organized very well in, in Ottawa County, because that's also part of the 2nd District, and they won all the seats. They they were able to to uh, put their slate in, and I believe they won every single um, uh, seat uh, that, uh, that was going to be uh, represented uh, to go into the, sta- uh, into the national convention. Are you uh, sure, Jim, that it was the Tea Party and not just the uh, Ron Paul? People? Oh, I'm sorry. I, yes, I mistook. It was the Ron Paul people. Uh, it was not the Tea Party per se. It was the Ron Paul people. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and the Ron Paul folks, uh, who, who generally... You know, obviously, to to the to the conservative side of the Republican Party, um, and and many of them were angry at the way that the primary, the, the uh, Michigan primary, had been uh, held and and uh, counted and things of that sort. But whether this is a good thing for Michigan or a bad thing for Michigan in terms of uh, having these folks uh, uh, win in 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 uh, in West Michigan. It's a wonderful thing, I believe, for everyone in the state to show that the little folks can have a, vo- a, vo- a voice uh, and do have a voice if we choose to use it. And, and uh, Andy, you had a, uh, d- d- a little story uh, about yes. this? La- last fall, I had a uh, high school student in my class at uh, Muskegon Community College. That's an American government class. And he was a Ron Paul supporter. And he wasn't eligible he didn't turn 18 until february and so he was wondering if he could vote in the primary and we figured out that he probably could and i just told him to talk to the county clerk and get it straightened out and i think he did anyway uh he asked uh, if he could be a delegate to the uh state convention and as you recall jim at our uh, county convention we didn't have a an excess of candidates for the state convention so essentially anybody who wanted it could get it so he got it but I know he was a Ron Paul supporter, and I'm assuming that he was down there and as part of that second district to takeover, as are quite a few other people from Muskegon County that we know that were at the convention. Well, I, I just applaud that activism. Uh, it, it, it takes a lot, I think, to, to go all the way down to Detroit uh, and, and get a hotel and, and, and that type of thing. Uh, and not everyone, obviously, is able to or really even inclined to do that. But but signing up to be a precinct delegate, now it's, uh, we, we've been talking about this for, for a few months. And when's, uh, uh, May 15th, last week, was uh, was the last date to sign up for that. But uh, It was the last date to get on the ballot, but you can get on it as a uh, write-in candidate right up until the weekend before the primary in August, I believe. And because we never have all the precinct delegate seats filled, uh, if you even do it as a writing candidate and vote for yourself, you're almost assured to be a, a precinct delegate. Now, do you have to sign up um, to, to be a write-in candidate, or can you just uh, have people uh, put your name in there? I believe you have to uh, put your name in the in the hopper with your county clerk or your township clerk before the uh, election just so they know whether they should count this vote or or treat it like a mickey mouse vote okay well then then uh, i'm glad you you mentioned that because i was unaware of that actually i was aware of it but i've since forgotten it and uh, i will make uh, i'll do a little uh, research on this and as we get closer to the august 7th primary up we'll, we'll have some more information about that so there still is an opportunity if you want to be involved in either the democrat party or the republican party if you want to be someone who really does have some clout and as we just found out here in west michigan those folks uh, not only had the clout uh, they utilized it uh, and uh, um, and they're going to be a factor as, as time goes on. And the reason I'm interested in this clout, because we, I, I started off talking about the, uh, the causeway and, and the highway stuff, this is what you are supposed to do as a citizen. You, you know, we, we uh, will elect our representatives, be they, you know, the township 
uh, trustees or mayors or uh, state reps or what have you, um, and we give them power, but we also have responsibilities, and those responsibilities are to, one, educate ourselves, and of course, there's no better way to do that than listen to Professor Fink and and uh, the legendary Oscar and even me on occasion, and I am Muskegon, but... The other way uh, is is that uh, is picking up the phone and contacting uh, your legislators, your representatives, uh, to to voice uh, your your support, voice your opposition to certain things, or even to make a simple question. And uh, last week, the Muskegon County Commissioners voted eleven to zero to put what they call a. Um, uh, truth in taxation hearing because the county commissioners uh, feel that they do not have enough money coming in and they want a tax increase. Now, this is not a it, it's interesting because it's not a significantly great amount of money that the at least they've announced that they, this new tax increase will will bring. It's a new millage. And uh, matter of fact, there will be extensions of other millages down the road. But I would strongly recommend uh, that you go to ionmuskegon.com and on the right hand column is contact information for your county commissioners and pick up the phone and say hey I understand you guys are going to have a a meeting and you've already voted to approve this explain it to me um, it's essentially unexplainable <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, uh, I would just suggest that <laughs> that you do that uh, you're going to have an opportunity to vote for these folks uh, uh, in August, uh, many of them, and um, and all of them in uh, November, and uh, you, they ought to be able to answer that question. And if not, you ought to say, "Well, why the heck did you vote? Uh, why did you vote to even go ahead with a public um, hearing if, in fact, you didn't know what the heck you're voting about?" Uh, we got a caller, and we'll take the caller right now. Caller, you're on the line. Hi. Hi. What's on your mind? I just want to tell you, Commissioner Jagger did not vote for the uh, tax increase or to even hear the truth in taxation. Hey, thank you for that. Um, and now that you mention it, given that I was there, I should have known that. He said 11-0. Um, actually, and, and, and now that I think about it, there was one commissioner who wasn't there, so it would have been uh, nine to one. And thank you because okay, Commissioner Jagger did not vote uh, to approve this uh, public hearing on the tax increase. Is that correct? As far as I know, that's correct, and he will not vote for the millage. Okay, all right, and and I think it's important uh, since we're going to be talking about that one lone brave soul who sits <laughs> up there, uh, and truly he is alone quite often, yeah. um, but he will be running. Uh, in um, uh, uh, for re-election, uh, and he's got a, a squished, if you will, or certainly a significantly changed uh, 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 district that he'll be running in, and he'll be running in uh, against uh, the winner of the primary. There's going to be a Democrat primary that will be uh, deciding who the Democrat candidate, but the candidate uh, who is the current county commissioner in that Democrat primary is uh, James Derzinski, and I believe that James Derzinski did vote for this tax increase. That's is that the way you recall it? Um, yeah, Jim uh, Jim Derzinski and Ron Haywood, I believe, um, are both running in the District Seven. Okay, that, that's correct, uh, and uh, it is District Seven. Okay, well, thank you for uh, thank you very much for clarifying that. And um, you know, I, I really, uh, you can either call in, folks, or you can email me, or you've even got the phone number that I've mentioned where you can call me at home if you've got some information you would like us to talk about. Certainly, communicate with me if you've heard uh, an error, and that's a pretty big error if you're going to leave a. I thought you were perfect. Uh, well, I did too, actually, but it uh, <laughs> turns out I'm not. Yeah. Honey Bunch reminds me quite often that I'm not. Uh, but but please keep us keep us honest here and um, uh, and let us know. And I think that's an important thing because you know quite often w when you're looking at, at some of the the municipal uh, elections uh, and you say, well, geez, who should I vote for? Well, this is this is a really clear one um, in, in the case of uh, Commissioner Jagger versus Commissioner Derzinski. If if uh, Derzinski is able to win his primary, you've got one commissioner who voted with all of the other. Democrat dominated uh, board and all the other Republicans who tend to vote just like Democrats most of the time, and you've got one uh, one commissioner voted against it. So if you like new taxes, if you like uh, new millages, uh, you've got a choice. Uh, uh, commissioner Derzinski voted for it, and uh, Commissioner uh, Alan Jagger voted against it. So that's it. it, it, it thank you both uh, commissioners because you made the choice easier for an awful lot of folks. Is he still considered uh, Doctor No? 
I, he most certainly is. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, he's you know he. he if you if you I've spoken to him quite often, but Commissioner Jagger says I don't like increasing the spending, and I has, in particular don't like increasing the spending when I really don't understand what it is they're doing. And uh, you know I'm going to read a little of this. A little. This is the official uh, what they call request for board consideration. It's three paragraphs long, and. Uh, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but here's part of it. It says, however, however, from the perspective of the Muskegon County operating levy, an additional criterion exists in the determination if a truth in taxation public hearing is required, comma, the use of convention facilities tax and cigarette tax monies for the need uh, for a truth in taxation public hearing, period. Now, I'm not even sure that makes any sense. Um, Generally speaking, I am. <laughs> a public a public hearing needs to be held this year to discuss purposes and therefore also allowing the use of the same county operating levy as last year, blah, 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 blah. If you read it, you will not understand it, and I, I think that may very well have been part, part of the motivation uh, for uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Jagger's uh, no vote. And again, he has specifically asked on num- numerous occasions, and I think it's important, I don't mean just to tout what I believe is a very principled stand on, on the behalf of Commissioner Jagger, but I think I, w- I would very much like to highlight what I believe to be an unprincipled stand uh, on every one of the other sitting county commissioners who, in fact, will vote for things without, in many instances, having a, 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 a clear sense of what they're voting on, in some cases, without even having a clue, as in the case of the uh, the Brookhaven uh, loan. Um, yes, you uh, I- I think that uh, maybe Nancy Pelosi's comment that we have to vote for this so we can uh, understand what's in it or, uh, is uh, a disease that uh, is from top to bottom in our American government. It it, it is sadly too 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 often and 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 you know uh, County Commissioner to me it, it stands so tall here because um, or uh, Jagger uh, stands tall here because. Uh, he doesn't pretend to be the smartest guy in the room. He says, oh, he's Wait a lot me. smarter than he pretends to be. Well, well, there's a little question <laughs> about that. But he doesn't pretend to be the smartest guy in the room like, like some of them do. He simply says, I just read this. I've had this explained to me, and I still don't understand it. What a concept. Does that, does that really, I mean, when, when people go there to these meetings and stuff, does that, does that, do they treat you like that, though? I mean, do they treat you like, oh, geez, and here's another guy asking a question, another guy that's giving me flack? Or I would use the term contempt. Uh, here, here is the, the, the policy. Uh, it's, I'm not sure it's a, a written policy, but it most certainly is stated policy. Mm. Um, there are two opportunities at Muskegon County Commission board meetings, board and committee meetings, for citizens to speak. You can speak at the beginning, they give you two minutes, and then you can speak at the end, they give you two minutes. But it is their policy not to respond <laughs> to what you say, and not to respond to a question that you might have. Um, so I call that contempt. Okay. I just so. I just hung up on one guy, but we got another guy in line, too. So. All righty. Well, I, we apologize if we hung up, folks. Uh, give, it a, give it a shot again. Well, we got one guy in line. All right. Well, we'll take that, that caller. Okay. Are you there? Yeah. Good, good morning, caller. Good morning, Jim. This is Bob Carr from up in... Uh Oh my Oceana gosh! County. Well, the, Bob, good morning. Uh, just good morning, to, Bob. For uh, and Andy is here with me, uh, Professor Fink. Um, uh, just for those folks who are not aware, Bob was a very active Muskegon Republican and uh, one of the, the 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 real founders of the Muskegon Tea Party when he was here and one of the, the drivers and has gone up. He left our fair county and moved up to a. He found a spot up in Oceana County that didn't have any cell phone or uh, internet connection. So good for you, Bob, and. Uh, and is a real driving force in, in politics up there. So good morning, and what did you have on your mind? Well, thanks for the kudos, and a lot of kudos to you for doing what you're doing right now. Well, keep it up, Bob. Keep calling and saying that. We'll, we'll let you on any time you like. <laughs> well, I get five bucks a pop, don't I? <laughs> That's true. You didn't need to say that on the air, though. You're cousins, aren't you, Jim? <laughs> anyway, what did you have on your mind, Bob? What I'm calling about is a, is, is a state convention and, and how that went. I didn't go, but I was very gratified to hear the results we, we've got a couple of good conservatives in there you mean as, as as the state uh, committee uh, humans correct yeah. okay and then they they decide the state policy what, well, what the party does well I think what's nice about that and again I'm I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan I truly am a big fan of, of representative Holly Hughes and of course she is local here but the problem I have always had whenever people are, are put in the position of having to vote for somebody be it a, a 
township trustee or a representative or, in this case, uh, a very important position to, to represent the Republican Party statewide and nationally is, why should I vote for you over the other person? And as much of a political junkie as I am, I've never heard uh, Representative Hughes or Saul Anuzis ever articulate specifically uh, you know, why they would be better than the others, whereas Ajima and um, Terry Lynn Land were quite specific as to what they would do differently. Yes, they were. Uh, and and it, this, this whole process goes to show the world is... Oh, one more. You're in, that, you're in that dead zone again on that cell phone. One, uh, say that one more time. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, probably breaking up. But the, the world is run by those who show up, and, and that just goes to prove that. If it, did you hear that? Yes, so true, so true. And I, I don't know what's going on with the Muskegon Republican Party, but it, I think it's kind of lame just to sit back and, and blame it all on uh, the Ron Paul people. Um, they were organized, and they showed up, and they did what the Republican Party says that they're supposed to do. Did you think that uh, this show was blaming the the Ron Paul people? Well, I kind of get that. Somebody mentioned a takeover, Ron Paul takeover. Oh, I I think I mentioned that. Yeah, I mentioned that. And and actually, I think your point is very well taken. Um, And and it wasn't a a slam at, at the takeover, although it was credit to those folks for for doing what you just stated, which was right. organizing and showing up. Um, uh, but the Republican Party uh, here in, in Muskegon uh, could easily have filled all of those slots with with people of, of a different mindset, and, and they just didn't get the job done. You're right. And, uh, boy, these races are starting to, to fill, to get exciting and at the local level, aren't they? Most certainly. And we're going to be talking about that. Uh, actually, we're, we're going to get right in there. Was there a particular race that, that caught your attention? Well, yours, of course. But uh, I'm, I'm more into Oceana County up, up here. <laughs> it's 10 bucks uh, for him now. <laughs> there we go. I better, yeah, you know, I, I meant to say this early on. Um, uh, I have I have filed, so I am now one of those scurrilous uh, folks, uh, 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 a candidate for elective uh, public office. Um, I have filed to run uh, in, um, uh, I believe it's District 4, uh, Muskegon County Commission, and I will be running against it in the primary. Uh, which will be on August 7th, running against the incumbent, the very long-term incumbent, uh, 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 Bob Skolnick, the old keep Bob on the job, and he wants to, to go at least uh, 12 years uh, as a county commissioner. So I will be running against Bob in the uh, August 7th primary, and um, uh, because there no Democrat has signed up, and that, that time has passed now, that uh, the very likely the winner of the primary will become the county commissioner uh, for the next two years. So Yes, of course, any Democrat who wants to run for that position can file as a uh, uh, write-in candidate. That's true. Yeah, it isn't over. And the same thing for a Republican, too. Um, and, and you can also get on the independent, run as an independent, and the deadline, I believe, is... In July, July, I mean June. I That's right. Yes, yes. If you're if you're not going to run in one of the uh, more traditional parties, uh, th- there is a little later date. So it isn't over till it's over. Um, and uh, and I'm in the mix. And um, but there are lots of other races here. Any other races that that you you find interesting and and why? Well, up in Oceana County, we, we there's a, a lot of people again showing up. The primary is the big thing. Six out of the seven county commissioners, for example, are uh, being contested in the Republican primary. Six out of the seven. That's yeah. tremendous. Because that's that's one of the things I noted here. Uh, of the uh, the current, um, we currently have eleven county commissioners. Next uh, coming coming this next election, we will have nine, and eight of the nine will be contested at uh, contested at at any number of different levels. The the uh, primary and the general. So that that. That really makes me feel good about citizen involvement. And I would like to throw in one other thing about the Tea Party, and it's getting a lot of bad press lately, but I think you can see it happening in in these local races. We've, We've started to get organized and get people to run for these. Uh, there's 
I think four of those seven are tea, in Oceana County are Tea Party people. Well, and, and for those who are, who are listening here, Tea Party has been, at least in West Michigan, it may be different in some other places, um, but the Tea Party is generally a group of people who are fiscal conservatives. That's the prime motivating factor uh, from my standpoint. Is, how is that? Is that a, a correct assessment from, from your standpoint? I'd say it's a mixture of... Uh, both social and fiscal. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that. Okay. Well, no, that's a, that, that's important. Limited so, government and constitutional government are also things that I hear coming out of the Tea Party people. Yes. Yes. And just like Grover Norquist's book, Leave Us Alone, that's a basic motivation, I think, for most everybody. <laughs> Well, I think most people, even even folks who who uh, would call themselves Democrats, uh, um, if they if they really saw the spending and and the efficiency of the spending, uh, they would be appalled. Uh, I know this. Uh, uh, we uh, before we went to the LST for the Armed Forces Day celebration, Honey Bunch and I walked all over uh, Muskegon, and we went out to the um, uh, golly the um, Grand Valley uh, Water Resource Building out there on the lake. And they had all of these cutaways, the things that that are uh, important for people in wheelchairs. But they had, and they were all brand new. They even had plastic over some of them. But these cutaways were on roads that that were dead ended. Uh, the cutaways were right there. I mean, we have just spent. Uh, if you if you walk uh, through downtown Muskegon, you'll see, if not dozens, uh, maybe even hundreds of these relatively new cutaways. Have to be quite expensive. They're all done on uh, what's called prevailing wage, which means in, uh, you, you can't pay what a normal rate would be here in, in West Michigan. You have to pay the, the highest union rate uh, in, the, in the Detroit area. Uh, and uh, the, taking all of this money, of course, which is all borrowed from children, <laughs> grandchildren and, and unborn children, and, and just throwing it away in these cutaways at the same time <laughs> that we have all these roads with, with potholes and bridges and need and everything else. So uh, uh, the, 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 the Tea Party folks are not happy with that. But, um, well, Bob, appreciate your, your uh, calling in. Uh, keep us on your speed dial. You sound, uh, the phone sounds good and you sound good. And um, as we get closer, I'd like to get maybe a, a little more of an update on, on what's going on in Ottawa County, too. Can I throw in one more quick plug? Absolutely. I'm running uh, for the County Road Commission up here. Oh, well, good for you. I filed on, on the ballot, got all the signatures. So. Now, is that is that a partisan, partisan uh, ballot? Yeah. Yes, it is. So you are running as a uh, Republican? Republican. Very good. Well, best of luck. Uh, uh, keep us informed. We uh, the, we may call the show I on Muskegon, but uh, we definitely know that Ottawa, Ottawa County, Kent County, and Oceana County are right around the corner. Keep up the good work, buddy. Hey, thanks, Bob. Appreciate the call. Bye. Hey, uh, since we do have Bob, uh, or Bob brought this up, let's. Uh, I wanted to kind of run down some of the very interesting races. Uh, uh, only two representatives, uh, U.S. congressmen in the state of Michigan, do not have challengers. Um, and our own Republican Bill Heisinga um, will be uh, on the ballot, but he will have no challenger. I'm a huge fan of Representative Heisinga. No Democrat challenger? Uh, there was uh, uh, David uh, Takitaki, uh, who's uh, an instructor out at Muskegon Community College, and initially said that he would be running, and uh, apparently he had some health problems and, and at the last minute uh, pulled out. Um, I am a big fan of, of Representative Heisinga, uh, truly a huge fan. I think he's. Uh, I, I've followed his his short career very closely but i do think it's healthy to have some competition so democrats uh just like the republicans may have fallen down a little bit here in muskegon county you democrats in district two the the congressional district uh need to to get out there and and see if you can get a quality candidate um at least to have a dialogue um senate race uh huge uh there are going to be what uh five uh folks that are going to be running against um debbie stabenow and uh, But when we get into some of these other races, uh, the 91st District, we have Holly Hughes. Of course, we just talked about uh, Republican Holly Hughes, who's the incumbent. She has a primary challenge, mm-hmm. sort of uh, the gentleman Mac, uh, Max Rixey, I guess they pronounce it. Rixey, yes. Rixey will, will be uh, forcing a primary run there. And uh, whoever wins that primary will uh, face a, a new... Uh, the challenger on the Democrat side, uh, Colleen Lamonti, who is, a, um, I believe she's a, a school teacher. She is a school teacher. Um, so uh, that's that's a, again. I think that's healthy. Uh, Holly will have to will have to hone her skills and, and hone her message and and be interesting to see what Max uh, Rixi uh, has to talk about. Um, I don't think so. 
Well, it, <laughs> now, now, now. It will be interesting. Uh, whether it will be inf- informative is, is, is another story, but, but we'll find that out. In the 92nd District, though, where the, the incumbent, Marsha Hovey Wright, uh, she also has a primary. Uh, against uh, uh, Willie Walton, I, I don't know if that's a gentleman or a, or a woman. Uh, and then, uh, and it, uh, wonderfully, there is a Republican, Travis Shepard, uh, who's filed in that race. So you're going to have a primary and a and a, uh, a general race there. And again, this these these things are excellent because they give these candidates an opportunity, and hopefully they will avail themselves of it to, how, how to they, tell us what they're all about. It, it, how do they how do they get their name out there though? Because like, like I say, you're having trouble pronouncing some of their names because you don't really know them yet. I mean, including yourself. I mean, you know, you're the the famous Jim Riley on, you know, News Talk 1090, but... Do you I need mean, anything more than that? Well, you know, you're facing Bob Skolnick. That's a, that's a pretty big... Well, actually, challenge, actually, think. there's as okay as a candidate, and I will address what you just said there. As a candidate, um, what I've found are there are two important things that you have to do. First off, you have to have a message. You have to, you have to. In my case, I'm going to be challenging an incumbent. Um, I have to be able to tell people why, very specifically, I would be better than that person I'm I'm going to be running against. And it, since you have an incumbent, you can you can look at their votes and say I wouldn't do this or I would do this differently. So you have to create a message and. Then, then to me, almost the bigger challenge is how do you get that message out? Right. Um, one way that I believe works, I've seen it work, is that if you have a compelling message and you take that message to people, the, to leaders within your community and say, look, listen to my message. If you think this message is, is of value, I would like your support in, in raising money for advertising. And, and getting the word out. And then there's the old fashioned, uh, you know, walking, walking into the community and, and knocking on doors mm-hmm. and, and shaking hands and, and that kind of thing. So whether you are a, a, an incumbent or you're a challenger, you must have a message. And, and unfortunately, I think in Muskegon, because we have so many of our, uh, of our candidates who are running, in this case, county commissioner, one, two, three, four, five, six, six of the nine candidates have been around eight years or more and want an additional two. And um, uh, they're, generally, they're not challenged. They're, they're, they're not challenged in, in terms of... And that's kind of to their favor, though, because people know those names. They say, oh, we'll go in the box. Oh, I remember him. Click. Well, name recognition is, is huge. Yeah. We know that. And, and that's what this show's all about. Again, uh, we're not going to be focusing on, on my campaign, but, but no. I, we are going to focus on the facts that if you're going to, to ask for, for my vote and you're running for, let's just say, uh, 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 um, uh, Marsha Hovey Wright, Okay, what is it that you are going? What is it that you've done in the last two years that 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 make me want to be able to vote for you? Or she's going to be running against uh, Travis Shepard. Travis, why would you be the better mm-hmm. candidate? Uh, too often we see these. You know, we've all gotten these dozens and dozens of of postcards over an election season with you know the 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 attractive spouse, the beautiful kids, the great looking dog, and the, and the lawn. You know, and and how wonderful they are, without really saying what specifically they've done. Right. right. And uh, I, I would like to see much more of that. We saw this in the uh, um, the state Republican Party, where uh, the the, um, the two state committeemen were were put under the gun, and 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 forced to 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 defend their records, and they both they both failed. So, and like I say, with, with advertising and stuff like that, it's it's still going to be hard. I mean, because like I said earlier, is is how how many people actually know who their county commissioner is. Almost none do, yeah. and you're right. It's yeah. very hard to do, but and uh, and it's it, it's the, well, new, the newspapers give you free advertising space in the form of letters to the editor, and if a uh, candidate uh, gets his name into the paper on a regular basis with letters to the editor, either by him or for him, uh, it it develops some name recognition. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's a way but to do it. That's kind of what you got to have to have is, is a little name recognition. Well, there is. There's social media. There's social media, but I, I will tell you, uh, Alan Jagger, for instance. I'll just use him as an example. He ran against a three-time or four-time incumbent, very popular gentleman, mm-hmm. up in uh, up in his district, uh, and and Alan Jagger won that election because he went out and he had a message, and he communicated that message. Um, so there's there's many more of these. Um, uh, races that I'd, I'd like to get talking to. So do we have a break coming up here? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll take a break and we'll come back and get even more deep into this.
Double Audio and Video offer a unique blend of services with life stories, memorials, documentaries, along with HD commercials and video editing, music video, all of some of the best prices offered, and years of experience on top. Also, Double Audio and Video offer video transfers, 8mm, Super 8, VHS, VHC, slides, all formats transferred to high-quality DVD. Double Audio and Video, on the website at oo-video.com, Double Audio and Video. Hi, this is Brian Kilmeade, inviting you to listen to Kilmeade and Friends. I break down the biggest stories of the day in the news and tell you what I think. Plus, you get insight and perspective from my Fox friends like Steve Ducey, Gretchen Carlson, Brett Baer, Chris Wallace, Governor Mike Huckabee, Bill Hammer, Martha McCallum, and people like Geraldo Rivera, only on Kilmeade and Friends. Catch it weekday mornings from 9 till 11 on News Talk 1090, WKBZ, the talk of Muskegon. There's so many songs about finding love, yet so few about finding a great price on car insurance. Why? Well, isn't shopping for car insurance a never-ending drama filled with struggle, tears, and heartbreak? As it turns out with insurance, not so much. See, insurance was built to cost less, which is kind of music to your ears, or at least your wallet. Visit insurance.com or call 1-800-insurance for a quote. Not available in all states. Savings may vary. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. Don't rebuild. Who wants to rip out your link? It's your finances. You want to go to the experts. Cut your payments by 50%. We've got to find a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. The National Foundation for Credit Counseling is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Speak with a counselor today at 800-388-2227 or visit debtadvice.org. This is a public service campaign for the NFCC. 24,000 children die every day from preventable causes. My name is Salma Hayek, and I believe that number should be zero. Believe in zero. Join the effort. Visit UNICEFUSA.org. This is Mike McCready, Pearl Jam's lead guitarist. For the last 24 years, I've been living with Crohn's disease, a chronic and often painful digestive disease. Luckily, I have my disease under control. But so many of the 1.4 million Americans living with Crohn's and a similar disease called ulcerative colitis live day to day not knowing when their disease will strike next. You can help by joining one of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation's 130 Take Steps Walks. Sign up today at cctakesteps.org. Take a step, register today. I took a bullet to the side and left me paralyzed. For injured veterans like Felipe Adams, there are veterans like Armando De La Rosa ready to help. Paralyzed Veterans of America, changing lives, building futures. Visit pva.org. Gum government, you sorry so and so's. You got your damn hands in every pocket of my clothes. Where you back? Gum. And we're back. I am Muskegon, Muskegon's number one rated political talk radio show. We are talking Muskegon politics, and we do want to hear your comments and uh, and your conversation. Um, give us a call at the number that I cannot find. Oh. I have it. Two three one eight three zero thirty one oh nine. Oh sure, sure. Still my it. thunder. I had it. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm not getting any younger, that's for sure. Uh, but we, if you're interested in, in uh, anything about the, the uh, political world or, frankly, anything that you want to talk about, we'd love to hear, hear from you. That's uh, 830-3109. But we are talking about um, those folks who have stood tall and will be running for political office uh, coming, uh, in, in many of them, in August and uh, and all of those who survive will be running in the November elections, and we talked about uh, some of the, the the higher level races. But countywide, it's it, it, it's I've never seen this much uh, activity, and and it appears to me this much interest by the citizens uh, in in county government. Um, we have three Democrats who are running for county prosecutor. There is no Republican, so that means that the August primary august 7th will will determine who our prosecutor is going to be unless a republican steps forward I, I, uh, uh, well you know what andy you're right but the problem is if if you uh, at this point um muskegon county has a, a a long tradition of straight ticket voting 
And um, I'm, I don't mean to to discourage folks who are thinking of running as write-ins, but uh, certainly countywide, it it would be the shock of of, of my political life to see a, a countywide uh, person win a, a uh, uh, write-in. Well, I think though that the, that the, if you maybe I'm, I misunderstand the process, but if you are a write-in candidate for the primary, then you are on the ballot uh, for the November election. Oh, that's why they call him the professor. You know what? You might be right on that. I don't know. He might be. I, I <laughs> you think see that I, look on his face? I think I'm yeah, right. yeah, I, yeah. I might. Yeah. How, how dare I even <laughs> suggest that he might be right? Um, Professor Fink, um, I bet you are. I'm not going to bet on me on this one. I'll bet. I'll bet on you. Uh, but that's another piece of homework we're going to have to do. So, so it is not over till it's over. Uh, and if in fact you do run as a write-in. Which now that now that you mention it, that would be so easy to do. You just do whatever the minimal filing is, and you get twenty five people. Heck, you might, might get five people to to write in for you as the Republican. Um, uh, that's an opportunity. I don't know. Let, we'll we'll double check into that, and that would be the case for any one of these cases because the county prosecutor, the county sheriff, um, both have. Uh, actually, uh, both have three Democrats running in each and no Republicans. So, again, that means that whoever wins that primary will be your uh, prosecutor or sheriff unless we, we, we find that, that uh, a Republican's interested. Although I, I will say that if you haven't been interested up to this point because it doesn't take much to, to sign up, it's unlikely uh, that folks will stand tall and, and uh, do the, the little tougher job. But And there's a reason for that, uh, uh Jim, as you mentioned, uh, we, we in this county tend to vote straight tickets, and that straight ticket tends to be Democrat. And so you have to have a little bit of uh, masochism to, <laughs> to run for sheriff or prosecutor it, in I this would county. Call it, I would call it courage. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think that I, I believe, and, and I might be naive in this, but I believe that uh, whatever position you may be running for, if you can articulate a reason for people to vote for you, that party doesn't matter. Now we do know that there is straight ticket voting. Uh, it's, it does appear, if you look at the the uh, statistics, it does appear that more Democrats vote straight ticket uh, than do Republicans. But um, uh, as as Alan Jagger and others have proven over time, if you can give people a reason to vote for you, um, and that part of that reason might be voting against your opponent, especially if that opponent is a a, a sitting uh, elected official, and and you can point out their voting record and say, wait a minute, would you want this uh, to con- to continue on? Um, I think that party, uh, you might be able to overcome it. But this is a Democrat county. We it, know that. Isn't that is, is one of those uh, the Democrats that are running? Isn't that one of the ones that got fired by Tony Tag too? Is yes. he still running? Uh, yes, yes. The three the three gentlemen who are running for county prosecutor are Steve Corwin, Mark Curtis, and D.J. Hilson. Now, one of those three uh, yeah, was, was the one who was fired. Um, and, I, and off the top of my head, I don't know. I don't recall Which either. It would be good for him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, but, it, but, but another one was one who was uh, relieved as the uh, a county uh, solicitor or in-house lawyer, whatever they call it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, well. so so there's there's a... Again, these are the reason we're talking about this is, and we will be talking about these things as we go further. But it's it's critical. These are important positions, very important positions, yeah. and and you need to do your homework. And one way that you can do that homework is pick up the phone and contact these candidates, uh, or certainly if these are uh, sitting elected officials, give them a call and demand. And I really mean this. Demand uh, an answer to the question, why should I vote for you? you know, aside from the fact that you've got this nice, uh, the, the expensive postcard that, that you've sent seven copies to my house in the, in the last three weeks. Um, county clerk, another one of the, the very, very important county uh, positions. Um, uh, the current county clerk, who uh, by most uh, views I've heard is doing a, a very, very fine job, Nancy Waters. She has a... Uh, and she's a Democrat. She has a challenger, Manda Matier. <clears throat> so there will be a primary there, which is really unusual, I think. I, I can't recall when we've had a, a primary for the county clerk's office. And uh, the winner of that primary will face uh, a really familiar name, um, a Republican. Cindy Fairfield is running as a Republican. Cindy okay. was a long, long time Muskegon County uh, reporter and uh, beyond that uh, editor, I sports she, editor. and, and I, I think she was editor of the op-ed page for a while. Wasn't uh, I, I think she was the, the editor of the entire paper there oh, okay. for a while. And uh, and I think did a very, very fine job. Um, I know I personally miss what I felt was her contribution to the paper. But I, I would imagine, 
that she will do the same thing that I'm recommending uh, that all uh, challengers do, and that is she will articulate a reason why she deserves your vote or or she won't get it. And, and Nancy Waters also, I think it's good for her. Uh, she can she can respond and she can say, look, I've done this, I've done that. So, But it's, uh, clerk is an extremely important race, uh, and uh, that's up. And county treasurer. Um, and I think this is uh, perhaps the most interesting of all the races. Um, the current county treasurer, Tony Malaciotis, is running again, and he's being challenged by a Republican Eric Rodoff. Now, um, I haven't heard Eric's campaign yet, but I do know that there have been some real problems in the county treasurer's office over these last few years. And there have been people fired. There's been some embezzling. There's all sorts of interesting things going on that um, I personally would like to have somebody hold uh, uh, Treasurer Malaciotis' feet to the fire and, and answer them. You know, have you been minding the store? Um, it may be that he has, but uh, it have would you, be nice to have him yeah. answer those questions. Um, as we talked about, we currently have 11 county commissioners. We will be going to nine. They've, they've, they've changed the uh, the district, so whatever district you were in before has probably got a different number. But... Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, six of those 11 commissioners are have been around for eight years or longer. And if you think that the county uh, finances and the way the county has been um, run for the last eight to ten years is, is excellent, then these are the people you ought to be putting on your list to reelect. Yes, yeah, if you like what you're uh, getting, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. And, and those folks are Bob Skolnick, uh, Republicans Bob Skolnick, Marv Engel. Um, Democrat Lou Collins, uh, Democrat James Derzinski, Republican John Snyder, and Democrat uh, County Chairman uh, Ken Mahoney. So if you if you think the county is on the right track, those are the folks that you want to reelect in particular because they've been around the longest time. Now, every other currently sitting Muskegon County commissioner is running again to be reelected. And, of course, there's 11 that's sort of like musical chairs. There, 11 of them are running. Um, uh, for only nine seats. And uh, some of the more interesting ones, uh, the races, I think, are uh, Benjamin Cross, Ben Cross, uh, who, who was a, a commissioner in the Muskegon Lakeshore area there. Uh, he is a first-termer. He's going to be challenged by Republican Mark Molitor. Mark is a uh, the vice president of engineering of one of the big companies in town. Mark's an extremely bright guy and uh, and has really done some homework. That'll be he, he will definitely be asking questions of Ben Cross as to why should you be reelected. Ben, ben is the uh, UAW representative on the county board of commissioners. Isn't he? Oh, okay, he could be. He could be. Um, uh, another another interesting one. Uh, current sitting Democrat Scott Plummer will be challenged by Democrat Susie Hughes. So this is another one that will be decided uh, in the primary. Um, of course, there, there's the uh, the eminent uh, James Riley, uh, who will be challenging the current sitting Bob Skolnick in the Republican uh, primary. So that will also be challenged, or that will also be settled most likely in August. This August 7th primary is really going to be unusual in that that it's, it's, it's going to be, in many, many cases, uh, uh, far more important than the... Uh, the, the November election. Well, when did Susie decide to throw her hand in the race? Uh, Susie is running as a Democrat against a Democrat, Scott Plummer. She jumped in about, oh, I don't know, maybe two months ago, oh, okay. six I weeks ago. And I noticed that uh, her husband, John, is also running for the Muskegon Township trustee. Yes, he's running for re-election uh, as trustee in Muskegon uh, Township. They're both pretty prominent folks in Muskegon Township. They, they're they involved in the Hughes Construction Company, an, an excellent construction company. And interestingly, you know, one that did survive this grand recession. So obviously they're doing something right over there. Um, two sitting commissioners who are going to be facing off against each other, um, Republican Marv Engel and Democrat Lou Collins, both very long-time, uh, long-sitting county commissioners. Their district has been merged. Uh, neither one has a primary challenge. Uh, hopefully, again, they'll be asking each other, why should I be uh, re-elected to this new seat? Um, another interesting one here, um, Current county commissioner in Muskegon, Anthony Longmire, is going to be has two challengers: uh, uh, Joshua Elden Elden Brady, um, and the old commissioner um, uh, Charles Nash, who Anthony Longmire replaced. So you have uh, an ex commissioner. Uh, challenging a current commissioner and a and a new person, this Joshua Eldenberry, uh, Elden Brady. So that should be a I think a a real interesting one. Again, you know we are depending 
um, either on, on, on you, the citizens, you, the, the voter, to, to pick up the phone and, and, and contact these folks or go to whatever events that they have. But most, more importantly, we are, really are re, uh, depending on the Muskegon Chronicle to help us out and uh, the Eye on Muskegon to help you make these decisions. We're going to be doing that, too. We will be um, sending questionnaires out to every one of these candidates and um, seeing, uh, seeing what type of response we get from them. Um, let's finish up here. Uh, as we mentioned, Alan Jagger, the Republican, will be running against Democrat James Derzinski or Democrat Ron Hayward in a combined district. So you have two sitting very popular, both of the both uh, Jim Derzinski and Alan Jagger, very popular county commissioners. Actually, I think that 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 perhaps uh, other than uh, maybe my race against uh, the Bob Skolnick, this gives you the clearest, easy decision. Um, Alan Jagger has voted uh, no on many, many or yes, actually uh, uh, issues uh, alone. Um, and uh, James Derzinski has been on the opposite of those votes. So you can look at those votes and decide. Uh, who you support based on on those votes so that's that's kind of an easy one if you do your homework and we'll try to help you do that homework Durazinski, because of the uh, uh, of all of the interesting races on the republican side of the uh, uh, on the uh, on other parts of the republican primary uh Durazinski is probably not going to get many republican crossover votes in this thing and and he is not a very loyal Democrat, as far as the Democrats think. I think he's been a uh, uh, a good Democrat, but uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. Hayward gives him a good run for the money just to, to punish Drzezinski for all the times that he's uh, crossed the Democrat Party. Well, that's an extremely good point, because uh, Drzezinski, I believe, was the county vice chair, and the Democrats... Um uh, moved him out. He was uh, actually the chairman once with the support of Republicans. That's right. Okay, there we go. Thank you for that that memory there. And and there was the the what what's I would call and, and certainly correct me if I'm incorrect on this, but the the Union Democrats uh, have a little bit of a problem with uh, Derzinski on occasion. Although he has not, to the best of my knowledge, in the last couple of years, uh, uh, moved uh, voted against the group. But but you're right. That's going to be an interesting primary. Uh, the winner, uh, Ron Hayward, James Derzinski will be uh, facing uh, Alan Jagger. Um, up in North Muskegon area, we've got uh, another couple races, and we're going to come back. Um, we will uh, try to finish this up, and we're going to continue this as uh, as we get closer and closer. So uh, uh, stay tuned. We will be back at I Am Muskegon. Double Audio and Video offer a unique blend of services with life stories, memorials, documentaries, along with HD commercials and video editing, music video, all of some of the best prices offered, and years of experience on top. Also, Double O Audio and Video offer video transfers, 8mm, Super 8, VHS, VHC, slides, all formats transferred to high-quality DVD. Double O Audio and Video, go on the website at oo-video.com, Double O Audio and Video. At Service One Federal Credit Union, your account information is just a call, click, or text away. Open a membership with Service One today, and you'll have access to account information 24 7 with our home banking, phone banking, mobile banking, and now text banking. At Service One FCU, electronic banking allows you to see detailed information, transfer money, make loan payments, and pay bills. With text banking, there's no more wondering. Simply text us, and we'll send you your balance within seconds. For more information, stop into Service One Federal Credit Union at 1075 East Sherman Boulevard or at 1625 East Wind Drive, just south of the Lakes Mall. Service One FCU is federally insured by the NCUA. I can solve difficult problems for a Fortune 500 company. I can run a successful business. I can put my military experience to work for your company. I can manage your home improvements. I can publicize your message. I can teach your children. But I can't put my skills to work for your organization if I'm not given the opportunity. Nearly 50 million Americans have disabilities. Capitalize on their talents with employment practices that benefit everyone. Learn more at whatcanyoudocampaign.org. A word from the cast of Hot in Cleveland. Want to hear a joke? Oh, yes! Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> What's the number one killer of women? Well, you're still here, so that rules out crankiness. <laughs> and tracksuits. A uh, heart disease. But that's a joke? Oh, no, it's an absolute fact, but the American Heart Association says you can save lives by passing it along to five women you love. Aww. Aww. <laughs> so I'm starting with three I tolerate. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> Find out more at goredforwomen.org. 
24,000 children die every day from preventable causes. My name is Neo, and I believe that number should be zero. Believe in zero. Join the effort. Visit UNICEFUSA.org. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know what to do about it. I tried counting calories, I took pills, eating and eating, and then more eating. I really wanted to stop, but nothing could make me stop. At one point, it was so bad that I just felt like giving up. I felt so alone. Like nobody else could possibly understand. We understand. We're Overeaters Anonymous, and we have helped thousands of people just like you. People who want to stop their compulsive eating and start living a healthy, rewarding life. Overeaters Anonymous, help me get my life back. Now I eat in a way that's healthy and good for me. I never realized what I was missing out on. With OA, I am living again and loving it. Start living the life you deserve with help from Overeaters Anonymous. Find us on the web at OA.org. Here's the official News Talk 1090 WKBZ forecast. Today, part of the cloudy skies and very warm with a high of 84. South winds 15 to 25. Tonight, variably cloudy, scattered showers and thunderstorms mainly late. A few could be strong to severe, low of 58. Southwest winds 10 to 20. Isolated thunderstorms in the morning tomorrow. They're mainly cloudy in the afternoon. Still a chance of rain with a high of 66. And only a few clouds around for Tuesday. Cooler with a high of 68. News Talk 1090 WKBZ, the talk of Mississippi. Gigan. Well, you dead gum government, you sorry so and so's. All righty, we are back, and we are trying to get through this this list of uh, of. Uh, Folks who are running for elective office here in Muskegon County, and I wanted to finish up just the the, uh, the final two county commission seats. Very long time uh, serving uh, Republican John Snyder will have uh, a Democrat uh, facing him in November. Uh, Democrat Terry Sabo will be running against the Democrat Chuck Woods in uh, in the Democrat primary. So uh, again. I, I think these primaries are great, and I think having a challenger is excellent because it gives the the uh, citizen, the voter, the opportunity to come out and say, "Okay, look, uh, what, what? Why should I vote for you?" And uh, I keep saying maybe the biggest, but this might be the biggest. Um, the Muskegon County is is really run uh, very heavily by the county chairman, and in this case, from Montague, it's Democrat Ken Mahoney. If you like the direction of Muskegon County, then you definitely want to support and vote for Ken Mahoney. If you think things are really going well, he's the gentleman you want to stand behind. Um, Republican Fred Birch, Captain Fred, who's a, an often uh, a co-host here, has uh, submitted his papers to uh, to challenge Ken Mahoney. He's not as enthusiastic um, with uh, with the direction of the county, and uh, nor is he all that enthusiastic with many of the votes that Ken Mahoney has made. So he will be articulating his reasons to replace uh, a long time and I would say relatively popular, certainly among some. Uh, county chairman, the, the 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 chairman of the Muskegon County Board of Directors, Board of Commissioners. So, I circulated petitions for Captain Fred, and uh, uh, people didn't know who he was. But when I told them who he was running against, they they quickly signed his petition. So hmm. I think there is, are some people out there who don't think that the county is going the way it ought to go in, in the White Lake area. Well, we're going to find out. Um, we will find out, of course, uh, in, in these elections, but I think it's critical to, to understand and remember that um, we have uh, uh, this August 7th election is really, really, really important. A couple of other ones that are interesting. Um, Laketon Township Supervisors got two folks. Uh, long-term Republican Kim Arter is now being challenged by uh, in, the, in the primary by uh, a retired sheriff, one of the sheriff's uh, deputies, Gary Bradinsky. Um, actually, we've got a bunch of other ones there. Uh, I do want to touch base on maybe we'll, we'll just have to come back next week and talk about them. Um, you know, we we uh, we will continue to try to bring up to all of you the the votes that are being done right now, the things that are done at the county level and certainly at the the city and the the township levels also. Uh, please give us a call uh, or send us an email if you've got some things that you think we ought to be addressing. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening, folks. Your power, the, 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 the 
time of greatest power is between now and the primaries and then between the primaries and the general election. If you want to change things, you really can change it. We saw it with the uh, those uh, those folks who went to the Republican convention uh, from West Michigan. We saw it with our Republican committee men. So we will talk to you next week at I on Muskegon, folks. Thanks to Andy and, uh, glad to be and Oscar. Here. Thank you. Have a great week. Double Audio and Video offer a unique blend of services with life stories, memorials, documentaries, along with HD commercials and video editing, music video, all with some of the best prices offered and years of experience on top. Also, Double Audio and Video offer video transfers, 8mm, Super 8, VHS, VHC, slides, all formats transferred to high quality DVD. Double Audio and Video on the website at oo video.com. Double Audio and Video. Hi, I'm Jenny Garth. Heart disease is something I live with every day. It runs in my family, and it took my dad's life. So I'm choosing to speak up, and so can you. Tell people how it's the number one killer of women. Tell them one woman dies every minute from it, and that 80% of cardiac events in women may be prevented if you make the right choices today. Join American Heart Association's Go Red for Women. Speak up to save lives at GoRedForWomen.org. Hey. Welcome to the Polka Melodies. I'm Tom Sanaki, your West Michigan Polka DJ, and I'll be with you all the way until noon today with polkas, waltzes, obetics, maybe a swing or two or a love number just for the family out there. Family music all the way until noon today. A good, clean, wholesome show. We call this the Polka.